Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. We are in the midst of Cobra Convergence 5. That's the G.I. Joe fan community's celebration of G.I. Joe's enemy, Cobra. And we are going to open and assemble a Cobra vehicle. Uh, we've done this before, but we've never done it quite like this before. This is a built-to-rule vehicle. This is the Cobra Raven with the action figure Wild Weasel. Now, I've never opened one of these before. I've never had one of these before. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these before. I know what it is, though. This was from the Spy Troops era of G.I. Joe, and this was G.I. Joe's attempt to be compatible with LEGO. So that's right, this is akin to a LEGO set. So this will be kind of like a LEGO build, but it comes with a G.I. Joe action figure uh, of Wild Weasel, a Cobra action figure, and yes, that action figure has Lego pegs on it, so you could attach Lego pieces to it if you ever wanted to do such a thing. So uh, we're going to put this thing together. It has a couple different modes, as it says here on the back. It has uh, mode 1 jet fighter, mode 2 hydrofoil. I'm going to put it together in the jet fighter mode because it does have Wild Weasel, after all. I have the tools I think I will need to put this thing together. So let's move the camera, get some nice close-ups, and join me as I build the G.I. Joe Cobra Built to Rule Raven with Wild Weasel. This will be something else. All right, this is supposed to be a sealed vehicle. I got it incredibly cheaply. Now, we haven't always had the best luck with sealed vehicles before. Uh, we found out that they were, in fact, resealed, and the pieces inside uh, were, were loose. Um, this has a figure in it, and that figure is just kind of kind of rattling around down in there. So uh, I don't know if that's normal. Uh, but let's open this up. Um, if you ever want to get uh, built-to-rule vehicles and put them together, for the most part, they seem incredibly inexpensive. Uh, there seems to be not a lot of demand for them, so the prices have not gone crazy. Um, I did not intend to tear that, but uh, this is... Uh, oh, okay, it is taped. That does not necessarily mean that it wasn't retaped. So let's uh, let's uh, slice that open and get this out so we can put her together. Uh, I'm not a Lego person, so I haven't built Lego for uh, ever, so like since I was a kid. Or well, you know, I helped my kids build some of theirs, so I guess that counts. Um, Here's a piece, and I think there's a... Oh, okay, yeah, there's a tray, but it's got stuff behind the tray. So let's just pull it out and just let the pieces go where they may. Um, and, okay, that's everything. Okay, nothing left in the box. I noticed that it has a file card. So, hey, it's one up on the G.I. Joe classified figures, which, uh, which did not have file cards. There is... Uh, wild weasel. Ah, I see what happened. He had these uh, little rubber band things that were supposed to hold him like right here, but those have snapped at some point, and so he was just kind of, kind of sliding around in the tray. So uh, let me just take these off of him. And there's Wild Weasel. Now I don't know how well you can see this, but he's got little Lego pegs on his arms um, and on his lower legs. Uh, what purpose they serve, I guess we will find out. There's uh, something else attached here, and I'm not sure what it is. Let's uh, just pop it off and see. Um, it's a piece. Uh, I have no idea what that's supposed to be. I guess the instructions will tell us. Let's see what the instructions say. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see here. There we go. BTR, Built to Rule, Action Building Sets. 
the instructions. Um, this looks like a catalog. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the GI Joe and Cobra range right there. Um, and it came with um, a locust um, and a moccasin and um, a few other things that didn't really look anything like the vintage uh, vehicles. That's okay though because you know this is a new era, right? So they they're they're giving us something new. I'll say there's transformers. I guess they had some transformers. Um, so, I mean, it is nice that this was an era uh, in which Hasbro was attempting to keep G.I. Joe relevant along with its other brands. Um, in recent years, um, they've kind of neglected G.I. Joe and have only uh, really this year started to uh, give G.I. Joe any real attention at all. Uh, let's see. So... Here are the assembly instructions. Now, are we assembling the jet? We are assembling the jet. Okay. All right. So, mode one. Yes. Mode one, fighter jet. Um, let's see. We start with uh, this piece. And, uh, okay, that's interesting. So, this is just an example piece. And it has a mate in there. I, I don't know, guys. I don't. I don't understand. I don't know from Lego, so um, I don't know if that's normal. Um, I do believe uh, these were not especially popular. It seems, but maybe that was a mistake. Maybe they're a lot of fun, and they should have been popular. We'll see if we enjoy building this. This does have the snake design on the side of the moray hydrofoil and that kind of makes me think the hydrofoil mode might be better but we are doing the jet mode today um, if you want to do the hydrofoil mode you know you're certainly welcome to do that on your own time um, it looks like i need to open this one maybe i should just open all of them and uh and start assembling there we go oh I need to sharpen this knife. That knife is getting dull. Shame on me for not sharpening it before now. I don't like dull knives. All right, so uh, according to this, uh, these two go together in what particular way? Uh, this symmetrical front and back, it seems to be. So it goes like, ah, yes, it goes like that, yes. You know, fits together like Lego and it looks I mean it looks like Lego but instead of the uh, little knobs uh, having Lego stamped on them it has BTR stamped on them this was not the only attempt to make GI Joe compatible with Lego there was also the uh, the Creo sets which were Lego compatible and some of them looked pretty good uh, and they actually came with mini figures instead of like uh, three and three quarter inch action figures. So it was even more of an attempt to be compatible with Lego. And they, they basically were a lot like Lego, uh, except, uh, except not. <laughs> uh, a Lego knockoff, if you will. Okay, so there are these wing pieces. How do these go on? These go on... Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Oh, for one thing, I'm looking at it the wrong way. It goes that way. Uh, and then, let's see. This one goes on this side. Not that way. No, it goes on this side. Uh, maybe. Like so. And the other one goes like this there we go and then uh, we got these little ski things uh, that one and this one 
And these allegedly go where? Like this? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, okay. Oops, wrong way. Um, okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you, there is a possibility that this might be a fun build because when we have built some vintage vehicles straight out of the box, um, they have been difficult, uh, surprisingly difficult to construct. So if this is like just putting Legos together, then it might be more fun. We might not have to worry about pieces not fitting properly. Um, okay, so next I need this. Let's get this stuff out of the way. I need this and uh, let's see, two of which one? Uh, this and this. Okay, so this goes here. Uh, like how? Like this? I think so. Uh, let's see. Line it up. That does not feel right. That feels right. There we go. There we go. And of course the Legos are sticking to my arm. Let's uh, make some room here. And then these go in the back like this and this. That's interesting. I wonder why they didn't make that one piece instead of two. Because it kind of makes an unbroken uh, piece there. Okay, so now we have wings and this and a long piece. Is that the right one? Yes. Don't try to get away from me. Uh, does this have spring-loaded weapons? That's what this looks like. It looks like a missile for a spring-loaded missile launcher. Oh, it does. Wow. Okay. Legacy of the 90s. All right. One thing at a time. We got the wings. Uh, we got this, and this goes on like so. Uh, let's try to get this more in your center screen. This goes on here. Let me line it up. I know lots of people like Lego out there. Uh, it's not my thing. Uh, I think I understand why people like it. Um, and I'm glad that people like it. Um, I, uh, it's, just, it's just not something that I do. Um, I, think, um, I think it can be fun. Uh, people put a, an amazing amount of effort into it. Um, for me, though, no matter how much effort I didn't align that correctly. No much how no, no matter how much effort you put into it, uh, building some amazingly complex item, some huge playset or something, it's still got all these telltale knobs on it, and it still looks like bricks in a lot of ways. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a, it's just a preference thing. It's no knock against Legos. Uh, this goes like that. I think I've got that right. If if, if I lined the wings up correctly, then it goes like that. Uh, the problem is it's hard to tell from the diagram here if I lined the wings up correctly. Uh, but if I didn't, it should become evident pretty soon. It looks like I did, though. No, except this has to go one more back. Okay. All right, so two of these uh, with these numbers on them. And then one of these, I think. Yes. Uh, and what else? Oh, and this. There we go. Um, oh, two of those. Okay, got it. So these are the pieces that we need this time. Uh, these need to go number side out, like so. 
So once this is assembled, it should be compatible with a three and three quarter inch figure. This, the Wild Weasel action figure should be able to fit in it and work as a driver for it, or a pilot, I should say. And I am struggling with this one for some reason. There we go. And then this piece goes like that, and it should stick out a bit from the back. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, there we go. Like that? Is that it? I think that's it. Uh, all right. It's hard to... Whoops. Maybe not. No, no. It's it, it, this is, I, I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right. It just needs to snap into place. So snap or click or whatever you do. Just get into place. Working? I think so. Yeah, there, solid, cool. All right, not bad so far. Step six, I need these fins. Need another one of these. Oh, I forgot to put those on. Need um, this, okay. Let me put these on, because I forgot. How do they go? They just kind of snap into the center of this uh, wing tip. Let's see. Um, how many? Okay, I think they want it. I think they want it like that. Maybe. Okay, here we go. There we go. There we go. One in, the other one snap it in. There we go. All right, so now we have two spring-loaded missile launchers on the wingtips. That's fine. I mean, it's a reasonably cool-looking vehicle so far. Uh, when it's fully assembled, though, we're still going to have little knobbies on it. So I guess you can continue to customize it if you want to by adding additional pieces or moving pieces around. I guess that's the point, isn't it? That's, uh, that's one of the reasons people uh, collect the Lego sets and build them. Uh, you don't just have to build what they give you. You can build your own. Um, when I did play with Lego as a kid, that's what I liked about it. Um, not so much building sets as uh, they were given, but um, building our own sets and kind of making whatever we wanted. Okay. All right. Okay, we're kind of building a structure here in the center to hold the back piece together. And I need this, which goes uh, here. No, oh, wait, hold on. I missed a piece. This goes here. Which way? That way. That goes there. All right, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. So we've got a sort of a uh, a body piece here, or like some kind of an engine piece or something. This goes here, and what's next? Um, step seven. We need the canopy, the canopy hinge, and one of these flat pieces. Okay, so. Let's see, the canopy hinge is going to go where? On top of that piece we just assembled. Like, oops, like that. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. There we go. I try to 
when I do my reviews, keep my person, my body, behind the camera and reach around it in order to uh, manipulate whatever it is I, I'm reviewing on the in front of the camera. Yeah, there we go. Canopy on. But that can get awfully complicated because sometimes I have to execute uh, complex movements um, that are on the other side of the camera and with the tripod in the way. So it's kind of like, I would liken it to trying to tie my shoes, you know, reaching around a tree. It's, um, it can be tricky sometimes, but for the most part, I try to keep my hands and arms out of the way and, you know, show you what you uh, came to see, which is not my uh, hairy arm. You came to see the, uh, the toy. Okay, I need one of these. I need one of these. I used a different one of those for the previous step. Oh, but I need that one now. I need hinge and hinge. That's it, right? Okay. So these go in here. They just kind of peg in. Will they swivel? A little bit, but not very much. They're pretty tight. There. Uh, let's see. And those are going to go on the tops of these fins in the back. Ah, looks like there aren't any stickers to put on these. I guess I should have expected that, but I got my tweezers out hoping we would be able to put stickers on. Uh, okay, come on. I know you can do it. And you will do it because, because you have no choice. There we go. So I've talked about Sandy before. Uh, the old guy I used to work with out at uh, Gardner's Bookstore. Uh, he was just kind of a handyman. And when old man Gardner wanted some bookcases built, some new bookcases to uh, expand some of the sections, called upon Sandy to, uh, to put them together. And... Uh, when Sandy needed help, I would help him out. So Sandy and I uh, built uh, a lot of bookcases uh, that are still standing to this day. Uh, but old Sandy, he uh, sometimes needed some cough medicine to get through the day. So uh, sometimes he'd run off to the convenience store and get him some cough medicine, as he called it. Um, and, uh, what he would always say when he, you know, put that level on the shelf to make sure it was level enough to, to not be noticed if it wasn't perfect, he would say, that was good enough for the girls I go out with. So, I, I, I get you. I feel you, Sandy. And this, I think, is good enough for the girls I go out with. I missed something in step eight. I gotta go back and finish it. It does take all, uh, there we go, all four of these. And have I missed this? Is this a piece that I was supposed to put on and I've missed it? But let's, hold on. One thing at a time, guys, and I'll go back through the instructions and make sure that I haven't screwed it up, which I probably have because I don't know nothing about this um, so we got to put these uh, these guns here on the front this does not look anything like uh, a Cobra Night Raven or a Cobra Raven or whatever you want to call it but it does have a passing resemblance to a fire bat uh, so you know you, this could be an AVAC and we could call this a fire bat um, it does have the uh, the cobra emblem, uh, the snake 
uh, that is from the Moray Hydrofoil. That still looks cool on an air vehicle, not too shabby. All right, I think I've gone through and found where the missing pieces went, and we're supposed to put the spring-loaded missiles into the launcher. One and two, and those should fire. Not too bad. Not quite as powerful as some of the, oops, that one's got stuck. That one doesn't fire well. Uh, oh, there we go. Not quite as powerful as the old uh, 90s GI Joe missile launchers. And Canopy swings up, and Wild Weasel can, ugh, if we can move him a little bit, can go in the cockpit. Um, and let's make sure that the canopy will go over him. There you go. There you go. It's going to be a little windy in there because there's nothing on the side. It's open there, but uh, he can fly around on that in that thing. Um, there you go. That is the Built to Rule Cobra, Raven, and Wild Weasel. That was my unboxing and assembly of the G.I. Joe Cobra Raven Built to Rule vehicle that came with the Wild Weasel action figure. Um, that was interesting. That was kind of fun. Was it more fun than building a vintage vehicle out of the box? Uh, no, not quite. Uh, we didn't have some of the hassles that we usually have with building vintage G.I. Joe vehicles. Uh, but we had different kinds of hassles with uh, figuring out where some of these Lego pieces go. Uh, but we did get it assembled. There she is uh, in all her glory. Um, I hope uh, you had fun. We will do more of these as time goes on. Uh, as I get vehicles to open, uh, I don't have any other boxed vehicles to open right now. I think I've assembled all of them. I don't think I have any uh, that are still sealed in the box. Um, I usually only open vehicles uh, from the 90s, although I have opened a couple late 80s vehicles. But usually only common vehicles. I try not to open up anything that would be uh, rare and expensive. Um, so as I get inexpensive vehicles to open, um, I will open them on video and we'll just have fun putting them together. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying Cobra Convergence 5. And until next time, remember only Cobra is Cobra.